floor calls a regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, November 14th, uh, 2018. Uh, Diane, please take the roll. Here. 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 Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Daddy. Up here. Up here. 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 All right. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. visit us a uh, number of times before on an annual basis, going over our audit. Uh, Judy has to leave for another library board meeting tonight. She's a very busy person, so we're going to take her first on the agenda. And uh, she's here from our auditing firm of McLaren and McLaren Syrup to present the results of this year's audit. Now, Judy, we already got a working draft mm -hmm. a while ago, mm -hmm. and tonight you've handed out what appears to be the final draft that's in our place okay. right now. Uh, first of all, can you tell us, there, are there any differences between the working draft, which was sent to us, and what we're holding now, which appears to be the final draft? Yeah, I don't believe so, because we worked out any uh, changes prior to this final draft that you received. So it should be identical to the to the final um, copy. Okay. All right. Um, Judy, would you like to go over the highlights of uh, this year's audit report? I would. Um, and again, thank you for inviting me to uh, the board meeting to present the audit. Um, first uh, thing I want to point out is uh, in the table of contents, the very beginning of the report. Uh, there's a couple new pages added under the required supplementary information. So, and the notes I think are, are like another page longer. So we're not getting uh, more concise no, in our profession, longer. unfortunately. Um, so it is a little longer this year. Uh, moving on to the independent auditor's report, we've issued an unmodified opinion, which is a clean opinion. Uh, which means the financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. So then moving on to page three, the management's discussion and analysis section. A very high level look at the government-wide financial position. Uh, total net position as of June 30, 2018 was just under 23 million which was an increase from the prior year, about 609,000. So, uh, turning then on to page four, we can see a little bit more in detail, what makes up the net position of 23 million. Um, current and other assets are up about 6.5% from the prior year. Uh, this is about the only page you will see comparative information too, as well. So. Um, from that standpoint, it's, uh, I think it's beneficial to see the trending. Um, Non-current liabilities, you'll see quite a bit of a decrease, and um, that was due to the um, uh, funding, additional funding uh, for IMRF this year. So it got the liability down to uh, actually an asset now. <laughs> you don't have a um, IMRF net pension obligation anymore, it's now an asset. Uh, and all that boils down to a net position increase of about 2.7% from the prior year. Uh, looking at the condensed statement activities, property and replacement taxes up just very slightly. Uh, interest income uh, investments were up about 25%, combination of uh, investment balances and interest rates as we'll see later in the footnotes. Uh, grants, that um, 119,000 actually represents your FY17 and FY18 per capita grant. I don't know if you recall the FY17 capita grant, they came in so late that we kind of deemed them possibly not collectible. So didn't, didn't <laughs> record them as receivables, which was pretty 
common throughout the library arena. Um, it did finally come in, I think, February, March, somewhere in there. Um, so it was recognized as revenue this year, as well as the FY18 came in then in July, I think mm -hmm. right after year end. So it's recognized as a receivable, which ultimately uh, reflects as revenue then. So you've got actually two per capita grants in this fiscal year. Uh, so total revenues are up about 3%. Mm -hmm. uh, total expenses are significantly down, as you can see, down about two and a half million. And most of that is it's primarily due to um, prior year you funded IMRF about $2 million in excess, excess of your required contribution. This year, IMRF was... Stevie, I'm, I'm sorry, you said it was in excess of what was required. Of what was but, required. It was your first year in IMRF. Yeah, but there was a purpose for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that was a, a financially responsible thing to do because you're paying interest on right. that unfunded liability. Right. So, um, so uh, this year, your IMRF contribution or expense under that employee fringe benefit line uh, was only about 150,000. So it's quite a bit, quite a bit lower. So that accounts for that big decrease in expenses. And then if you look down in the net position um, section, you'll see a prior period adjustment. And this happens whenever there's a change of accounting principle. And this year, last year, you had the change of accounting principle because, well, actually, IMRF was not a change of accounting principle. That was something you adopted. This year, the change in accounting principle um, is something called, it's a liability related to other post-employment benefits. And I will explain that as we get further along uh, in the report. But um, whenever there's a change in accounting principle, you don't want to recognize the entire expense in one year. You take a you you look at the beginning liability, and then that is reflected as a reduction of your net position. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's all about. Uh, page five. These are the changes of. Uh, reflected of all your, in the modified accrual basis of accounting of all your funds. So beginning fund balances and then your net decreases and increases. Uh, the only item I really wanted to point out was the building and site fund. Um, it's at a deficit balance right now and Karen and I had a conversation about this. Um, right now uh, your property taxes are not <laughs> such that they are able to meet the uh, annual expenses. So this will continue to grow at the current rate anyway. Um, and then this can also be taken care of by an operating transfer, something so of those sorts. So we have the option of either raising taxes of this fund yeah. in the future, I, I, or as we need to transfer funds from the general fund um, into this, these accounts, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. If needed. So let me add, yeah, go ahead. Let me add some uh, context. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, 2017, uh, tax year is the first year in a long time that we uh, levy taxes for building and site. Uh, we levied approximately uh, $300,000, okay? Yeah. And um, which is more than sufficient to take uh, to retire the deficit as well as to take care of our needs. Uh, unfortunately, only the first payment of the 2017 tax year was uh, wasn't. I'm sorry, yeah, the first first installment first installment of the 2017 tax payment was included. Or maybe, maybe it's 2018. But only half as much is what I'm trying to say. So it looks like a deficit, but we're actually uh, taxing at the uh, legal limit of, uh, I think it's 0.02% uh, for, uh, for building and site. Okay, so over time, it will decrease. It will decrease. But we only have about 160,000 of revenue in mm -hmm. in this part. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Yeah, because I know we actually had in the past sort of spent down those funds, sort of mm -hmm. intentionally, mm -hmm. and then with the notion that we would eventually sort of build it back up mm -hmm. again, but that we weren't necessarily taxing those funds every year. Right. And I think that's pretty much what has happened. But we should catch up. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, all right, Judy, if you want to go ahead. Okay. Sorry for interrupting. Hey, no, that's all good, good information. Um, I'm going to have you uh, turn over to page six. We'll get into the basic governmental fund statements. Uh, this is the balance sheet. It's called the balance sheet when you're referring to the governmental funds, and it's a statement of imposition when you're looking at government-wide. And the government-wide just includes long-term assets and long-term liabilities. And that's what that adjustment, adjustment column is for. Um, so just things to note here. Uh, the other funds, you've got general funds, special reserve, those are your major funds. Other funds are all those other non-major funds. Um, and they are on page 20 and 29. Um, in the uh, audit report. Um, if you look under uh, second to last line of assets, your net pension asset, that's uh, referring to the IMRF plan. Um, investments were good, you contributed you know, additional funding and it converted into from a liability into an asset. So it's at 276000 right now. Uh, depending on what the markets do, 1231. I mean, this is a you know one. It's a looking at it from one picture day. It's a one point in time uh, as of December 31st. So um, depending on what the markets do at the end of the year, that could change. You never know. But um, also something to note in here um, in both the asset and the liability section, you have a due from, due to, and due from, and this is to, you can't have a cash balance that's a negative, and right now that a building, building a site fund is, has negative cash, so this essentially equates that. Um, it's borrowing from the general fund, essentially, keep everything positive. Okay, then moving on, page seven is a statement of revenue and expenditures. Not too much more that I want to discuss here that we haven't talked about already. Um, looking at the general fund and the fund balances that are available for expenditures. Um, at 2018, there's about 10 months of expenditures housed in uh, fund balance right now for general fund. And that's probably, it's pretty steady, it's been pretty steady at that. 2017, I believe, was 10 months as well. Okay, then heading into the footnotes, we turn to page 12. It's note 2. This uh, describes your uh, cash and investments, otherwise known as deposits and investments. Um, all your deposits were under the 250000 FDIC insurance level, so there was no need for any additional collateralization on any of your deposits this year. Um, and investments, you'll see uh, negotiable certificates with the weighted average maturity, weighted average rate. Last year, the weighted average rate um, was 1.74, so those rates are climbing a little bit. Uh, U.S. government agency securities in FY17 was about the same, about 1.34, uh, and then the money market fund was at 0.7. So uh, that explains the inter increase in your interest income this year. And turning to page 14, note 5, you can see the change in um, the net pension liability, converting it to an asset. And then this other <coughs> new liability called other post-employment benefits uh, that has been calculated by actuaries of uh, your balance at June 30, 2018 to be 92,678. And if we turn over to page 18, there's a whole new footnote on it, or an expanded footnote, I should say. Uh, you had it last year, but it was under a different governmental accounting standard. Uh, last year it was um, they called it GASB 45. So that represented just a liability of annual required contribution, so more of a funding liability, effective 
FY18, you're under a new standard, GASB 75 is called, and we just refer to it affectionately as OPEB, Other Post-Employment Benefits. Yeah. Um, it represents a liability um, that an actuarial um, report or study has been done uh, in order to accrue that liability. Um, essentially that the library assumes the liability uh, for current IMRF employees uh, because they could be part of your health insurance once they're no longer, they've separated from the library post-employment. Um, so you combine rising health care costs with an aging population and it does there's a there's an implicit liability out there. Yeah. It's very fuzzy. Greg and I have talked about this at length, um, and I said, "Don't nail the messenger." It's just it's it's an unfortunately uh, uh, something that just because of the sizeability of it, it had to be recorded as a liability. It does not impact your funds. It's a government wide liability. Um, and it's something that will just have to be monitored, I think, every other year during an actuarial study. So it's likely, it's unlikely that, that this liability will ever be paid. Mm -hmm. uh, but under, um, under the accounting pronouncements, uh, we have to report it. And what it represents is the, the provision in the state law for, the, uh, uh, for IMRF, which says that uh, employees who separate but uh, cannot get Medicare can, can buy our insurance or buy insurance and we have to subsidize that insurance to, so that it gets to the same level that we're paying on our group policy. Okay? But the simple fact of the matter is that uh, uh, through Blue Cross Blue Shield, retiring employees who are not eligible for Medicare can buy directly from them First under Cobra, and then under continuation plan that, that we have set up. Today. Cobra's very, very expensive. Cobra costs us nothing, but but um, but anybody who's buying insurance right. under Cobra pays the the full amount. So for so a single person, for a single person, that amount is uh, close to ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And um, what we what we charge based on uh, the way the library subsidizes it. We actually uh, charge nine, almost a thousand, uh, maybe close to twelve hundred dollars. I think it's forty-seven dollars a pay period. So, um, uh, what this is, what this liability is intended to recognize, is on their own. They may be able to go into the marketplace, but they'll pay fifteen hundred dollars a month. And this only applies to people who are not eligible for Medicare. Yeah. Because if you buy a Medicare, I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's, uh, uh, there's a lot of that that's paid automatically and mm -hmm. it comes out of your Social Security. So if they, if they separate, <clears throat> am I hearing that they can get it through the library then? Yeah. But, so, so you know, why, why would you pay $10,000 when, you know, when your total Medicare plus supplement probably don't run close to five? Mm -hmm. okay. So it makes no sense if you're eligible. Medicare and, mm -hmm. and but, but so when are you going to be able to collect Medicare? Uh, 65. Oh, so 65. So if somebody retires before 65, mm -hmm. right. as some people do. Right. As some people do. And, and under IMRF, um, normal retirement age for Tier 1 is uh, 62 years old, mm -hmm. so three years short, but you can retire as a And if you retire at 62 and... I, I'm, I'm not your financial genius. I'm just concerned that there's some extra cost here as a result of doing the IRM. Well, let me, as I said, this is, this is a paper liability. It's very unlikely that we'll ever pay a dime on it. But under the accounting pronouncements, we have to go through this exercise and try to quantify it. And uh, the discussion that we have with the actuaries is how many people are actually going to take advantage of this? Well, we don't have a track record. Yeah, I know because you just started. <laughs> yeah, and it's just a guess, you know. So they try to make an educated guess based upon populations and activities that they see across their practice, and um, and this is what they came up with. As a matter of fact, when 
when they did the first draft, it was much higher. And we talked at length um, and uh, got them to basically have their, uh, uh, their estimate in terms of what the participation Yeah, it's hard to do a trend uh, when you're, you just started it. Uh, although, as she pointed out, health care is always rising. Yeah. Always. But right now, the and as, as baby boomers continue to age and retire, you're, you're going to see more and more. But right now, the trend that we have is zero in the first right. year, zero right. in the second year. Right, sure. Probably zero in the third year. You know, I mean, as you noted, uh, you know, paying the full price of health care is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Whether you're paying at the library rate yeah. uh, or on your own. Right. Yeah. Right. So, hey. Okay, so just wanted to put some color to it. Okay, thank you. Okay, where are we going to? Um, well, then, page 19, again, is continuation of that footnote. Uh, and it discusses that changes in that OPEC liability. So last year, um, your liability was at 129,000. It wasn't a liability you had to book. That was under the old standard. The new standard now requires um, you to book the actual, the total liability. So, but if I'm reading this right, it's mm -hmm. 92 now? 92, right, okay. right. And again, it's just a, it's a, Long-term liability, so it's not. It doesn't impact your funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so then, the last page I want to point out is page thirty-one. It's your property tax assessments and collections, extensions, everything you need to know about property taxes, at least over the last three years. Um, Still not there. Okay. Very last page. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, and Greg and I had a discussion about this as well. We added some uh, clarification um, describing collections to June 30, 2018, as you see down below. Um, because, you know, technically the 2016 levy is, you collected better than this, but the problem is on the back end, then you start having refunds. 10 years down the road, that sort of thing, you're going to start seeing refunds against it. So what this represents, the collections of June 30, 2018, it's 2016 levy under that column, uh, plus any refunds from prior years. Mm -hmm. So, and you can't not um, take those into consideration um, because ultimately there is mm -hmm. some loss in cost. And right now, you know, everything is estimated at essentially 3%. And you're running a little bit higher than that. And uh, as we said, it's refunds from prior years and distributions to tip districts. So it jumped a little bit in 2016 just for that reason. Perfect. So if you look at the county reports. Mm -hmm. The county reports? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For, for property taxes. <laughs> right. uh -huh. yeah. um, uh, initially, in every tax year, we're collecting somewhere, the county is collecting somewhere in the 99% 99 percentile, 99 and a half or, mm -hmm. or something like that. But as time passes, what happens is that uh, the operation of property taxes under uh, PTAB and, and, and PTAL and, and so forth, which uh, gives, uh, gives property owners the uh, opportunity to protest. Um, it, especially large property owners, um, when that starts to operate, and then we see refunds that are granted down the road, um, that's you know that's what the loss in costs are. Then we recede from 99 percent to somewhere you know 94, uh, I'm sorry 96 ish uh, percent, um, and then. You know, on top of that, there's uh, there's amounts that are actually uh, paid uh, about two hundred thousand dollars a year, I think, at this point, uh, that are being paid into uh, tip districts. Uh, that you know that affect us. Don't come to us. That's right. Yeah, but we approved that. The library board approved one of the tips, right? I don't know that we approved. No, we, we objected to it. We, I, I think we weren't asked, and I think it was left to uh, uh, Susan and, and Greg's best judgment to yeah. approve mm -hmm. that. And I think well, they did. Is that correct? I don't have the authority. At the, at the review board meeting, yes, uh, all of the, everybody that was there voted in favor of it because there basically was no point in voting against it. 
Okay, so. yeah, the only um, the only vote against at the uh, joint review board level, uh, the only vote against is if you have a uh, legal rationale to uh, to vote against it. It wasn't constructed appropriately. Uh, the boundaries were were drawn incorrectly, uh, or or something like that. You can't just so say, you can't object to it. I don't like it. So you can't say, well, gee, it's going to affect our income for the library. Yep. So therefore, I that's, don't want that's to. Not a, that's, that's, that's not a rational I, objection. They don't care for it? Or? No, no, it's just a reason that you can do It's not a rational objection under the law. All right. You see, I, I'm not being a, a, a TIF specialist, but to me, it just sounded, gosh, counterintuitive to uh, say, yeah, TIFs are, are going to take money away, but we're going to go ahead and, and uh, tell people that we're okay with that. Just didn't sound right, you know, when I read it in the paper. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we're back to you. Yeah. That's it. Uh, um, yeah, that was the last page. Okay. <laughs> so as far as the audit report goes, I'm finished with my presentation. Unless I'm going to ask a question, then I'm going to let everyone else ask a question. Who has one? And yeah, my question is. Uh, do you remind me, did you have any recommendations at the end of last year, and were those addressed, and do you have any recommendations going forward? Um, last year, yeah, we had one um, comment that we brought to the board, just so that you were aware, and it had to do with uh, an adjustment of FICA tax on the IMRF deductions that um, okay. employees were taking. Um, and all of that, we followed all that through this year. Everything was... Um, um, all the 941s were properly filed and all the funding was taken care of um, very expediently, actually. So um, that was the follow-up from last year. Um, and this year we had no recommendations for the board as far as um, concerns about internal controls or anything like that. Everything uh, was very clean. So. Thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, does anyone else have any questions about Judy Walter while she's here to uh, present on a report? I had a question about IMRF. We, and I, I don't know where the figures are, but we talked about um, whatever we needed to pay for the underfunded amount, which was two or three million. I don't know where we were with that. That was prior years. Yeah. And so now we're down to like 150 or 167,000. There's a low number. Is that just what we pay now in IMRF contributions to them? Is that what that number represents? Um, your actual contributions will show up on page 26. Okay. <clears throat> and this is this is a calendar year because the the measurement date is 1231 for IMRF. So actually, our determined contributions for 2017 were 233,000. You actually submitted 532,000 higher than that. Because we were paying off that underfunded. Correct. Okay, right. so then, then I do have a question. Now, this, is, this payment to IMRF represents what we need to pay for our current employees. Is that, you know, there was a 4.5%. Is that what this represents well, that we pay IMRF? 4.5% is uh, withheld from employees, so it does not. But our portion of it. it. Our portion uh, of it um, was for the last half of the year 7.31%. Prior to that, it was 8.12%. 8 8 is that this 233,000? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my question is. Yeah, but going forward, it's 5.31%. Uh, Starting right. January first, right. so it's come way down for current employees. So my question is for employees who have retired, and mm -hmm. now we're jumping into paying their pension. Is that an amount that we also need to add mm -hmm. to? No, they actually that actually gets pulled out of out of our budget. three. Out of, okay, they're not, mm -hmm. they are out of your plan as well. Okay, so I just funded in there. So it's not an additional cost. No. No. Okay, great. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay. I have a question. Oh, no, I have the other trustees do. Um, Judy, there was a letter to the editor today, written by one of our trustees, accusing Greg and I of mismanagement. And I just wondered if you had uh, any evidence of that in your review of all of our finances and our procedures and anything else that you looked at. Um, no, if anything of that caliber had come to our attention, you, you would have heard about it. 
Uh, no, matter of fact, there's very few audit adjustments that are required to get the, the rec books and records that you see, the financial statements that are presented to you. Very, very few adjustments are ever made to those. Most of our adjustments are for the government wide, the long term assets that don't hit your funds. So, no, the books and records are in great shape. And in response to the article in the paper, her <coughs> audit does not even come close to a forensic audit, which would look more detailed into the operations at the level that this board reviews monthly. So when we talk about mismanagement, we talk about RFPs, we talk about numbers that are not balancing, and a lot of things that happen internally that she doesn't delve into. She looks at things that are more on a superficial level. So we're talking about two different things here. Oh. But I would love to take the time and just show you what I mean, and then you could have a different um, idea of what I mean in terms of what you're thinking of. I was under the assumption that this wasn't a superficial level. Mm -hmm. This is an audit at a different level. I mean, she, she doesn't go through all of their processes. She's not trying to uncover how did they determine these numbers. I think you are doing that. Uh, yeah, we we look at uh, the Everything. balance sheet. Oh, we look at the balance sheet in totality. So any of those numbers are tied up to a, a material, an immaterial number. Okay, so it's small. That's and not I, superficial. Right. And uh, we also look at your internal controls as the processes. So we understand the processes, and that helps us then, you know, perform your audit. Uh, yeah, with much more assurity. So, um, and in doing all of that, test we do some testing on cash disbursements and and payroll and there those sort of things. Everything is sample test. Yes, there's a difference. Absolutely. She's sample testing. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about think, uh, the entire process. Yeah, I don't think you could afford a general audit <laughs> Well, we didn't hire you to do that, and that's no. what you told me last year when I asked about a forensic audit. That's not your no. type of auditing. So we're talking about two different things here. Um, it didn't sound like that in the newspaper. Uh, but I will ask you, your spot checking, isn't that typical for most audit mm -hmm. firms? Mm -hmm. Independent auditor firms like yours, that right. is how the checking is done. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you were to find errors, then yeah, you expand your sample. But uh, if you don't find any errors, then there's, you can extrapolate that to zero errors. Errors is extrapolated to zero in the population. So, um, have you right. found any evidence that would warrant, in your opinion, a forensic audit or any deeper audit to, that would warrant any further? deeper investigation? Uh, I don't know if that's the question. That's the question. I'm, I'm, just for a different I'm sorry, that's my question. Yeah. I'm just asking my opinion, opinion, I would say no. I would say no. Thank you. I, there's no evidence of that. It was in the, you know, the week that we stay here and work on the books and records. Um, Judy, thank you very much for your report in your presentation, uh, in answering our questions. I uh, really hope you have a safe trip to your next destination. Mm -hmm. See you again. Thank Hopefully you. it goes smoothly. And here's extra copies. You can just leave this there. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, I now move on with our usual agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of October 17, 2018? Motion. Second. Okay, are there any corrections, corrections or comments regarding the most of the minutes of October 17th? Okay. I have some corrections. Really? Um, under new business, I think it's page, page five. Um, there's a sentence in there that I, I didn't actually state. Um, it's regarding line two. Let's see, where is it? The last paragraph. 
Oh, wait, wait, you know, that's the wrong page. You know, first of all, I'm sorry, my first correction in new business is Ordinance 18-05 on page 5. Mm -hmm. And that's all it says. Um, at the meeting, 1805 was identified as a levy ordinance. Mm -hmm. So I would just like you to include that because I wouldn't have known 1805 meant levy and I wouldn't have had something to say about it. And so I think that's just clearer. And then my other one is, um, oh, it's under other, page six at the bottom. Okay, um, look at the end of line two, all of three, and part of four, I didn't say. Um, the chapter one issue about six issues or four issues, that was not my comment. That was a conversation that was going on uh, around the table. Um, I just would like you to remove, and I, as I wrote it here, it says, line two, remove the end words is not, remove all of line three, and the first words in line four, quarterly issues. And then to include my statement, um, after line two, the word survey, do not represent responses from actual recipients of the mailed chapter one. Ask, would you prefer future online versions instead? What programs have you attended? That's what I was talking about. So it's like take out those two sentences and put in my two sentences. Well, um, I was not in the meeting by that oh. point in time. Does anyone else have a recollection as to whether or not this is an accurate um, representation of what? I do remember you talking about that you thought it was 205 wasn't enough to increase it. But you're saying now you didn't say that? No, I said 205 does not represent the people who receive the uh, the um the delivered publication. I was talking about having a survey go out to the people who are receiving the mail publication. And somebody was talking about we had an online survey. Well, those questions weren't targeted for people getting the paper um, publication in the mail if they're attending. Remember I asked, are they attending mm -hmm. programs? Mm -hmm. And then my other question was, would you prefer to receive this online? Because my issue is to cut the cost since they're just throwing them in condo buildings in the um, entranceway. And everybody else was concerned about going from four to six publications. And I said, that's not a question I was interested in at the time. So this was my statement. Just trying to say, I didn't talk about four to six publications. No, I'm not taking out the 205. I'm saying what I meant by that. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So I typed it. If Maybe if you and look at it in writing, it makes more sense. No, I understand what you're saying. And um, never mind. I won't say what I'm thinking. So... Okay, so you're just saying that you, and how did you want to ask them again? Did you say you wanted to put something in the flyer and have them mail it? Like, how did you want, how did you want this? Yeah, yeah. how would you ask? Would you mail that also like to them, would or you, would you put it right in the flyer? How would that survey be? Remember I said we have a survey printed in the next publication. And that's, where's this? Let me get the sentence and read it all. Maybe it, that's the problem. It's all cut up. Trustee Durbo proposed that the usefulness of chapter one be addressed with the survey, which could be included in the next publication of the newsletter. The 205 respo responses received from an online survey is not enough. I didn't say any of that. Okay, what I said is, the 205 responses received on an online survey do not represent responses from actual recipients of the mail chapter one. And then I said, ask, would you prefer future online versions instead? What programs have you attended? Because I, I said those were right. But, but I'm asking, how would you ask? 
How, how you put a survey. To ask. You put a survey, which is a square. I said we would we would put inside the publication, and then just ask a couple of questions. Remember, there were enough. How would we get that? Back? All right. Well, we, we, we know right now. I think we need to focus in on what was said or not said. She just wants okay. what's so, said or not said. Yeah, so, we're not all right. Okay, sorry. So we have a movement and a second. No, are there okay. any other changes? And, yet, it, and she did say that. Yeah, I do recollect that. And that's okay. fine. But, the, you, but there is also, I'm sorry to interrupt, the yeah. question of do we have to represent present everything that was said, which I think we have gone over many times, yeah. and we don't. No. And Susan, you're misrepresenting my statement. So let's take that sentence inaccurate. out. Let's take right. that sentence completely out, and then the rest of it is accurate. It just doesn't reflect everything you said. There. All right. Well, now it's inaccurate. It's not correct. Well, it doesn't have to reflect exactly what every person said. The minutes cannot possibly reflect everything. Because the minutes will be said. like a book. Well, let, let, well then it's you know supposed what? to be a summary. I know, what an fact, accurate summary. You just took out my statement. Yeah, but it doesn't have to have everyone's statement in it. In fact, all it really has to have is the roll calls on the votes. I mean, that's really Okay, I'll tell you what. Take out take it all everything out. else out except the first sentence, because I don't okay. want to be responsible for Sounds that nonsense. Fine. Sounds fine. 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 Well, I don't think we should take out Trustee Martin's statement. No, no I'm talking about her mine. statement. She's concerned oh, about. Oh, okay, Brenda. Right. I mean, why would I want to take out someone else's? Right. That's what you were saying. Anyway. Okay. So, all right. So the movement and the seconder. Uh, Carolyn would like to make two changes under page five. She'd like it to be referred to the levy ordinance 18-05 instead of just ordinance 1805. And in the bottom of page six, she wants to take out everything after the first sentence up to the point where Trustee Martin made a comment. So. Is the movement and the seconder accept that change to your motion, that friendly amendment? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Then uh, we're ready for a vote. Would you please call the roll? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Jen? All right. We are now to the public comment section of our meeting. Uh, do we have some? Registered. Okay. Right. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Fine. Uh, just from looking at the uh, sign-in sheet, and I'm going to be calling everyone who does want to speak on that. And I see a number of people have mentioned uh, the parking lot um, uh, um, as something they want to talk about, and um, I do know. Uh, that this was mentioned in the newspaper and that uh, it states trustee Carolyn Durbuck said trustees plan to discuss purchasing a home adjusting to the library used for a parking lot. Um, first of all I want to say that under the Open Meetings Act the um, public bodies may go into closed sessions for certain reasons and they need to announce generally the reason why they're going into closed sessions and and we did do that at the last meeting uh, we said among other things we're going to closed sessions to discuss the purchase or lease of real property for the use of the public body and that's what we need to say and that's that's all that we need to say and beyond that uh, we really shouldn't be discussing other matters or other details that were discussed in closed session in fact the Illinois Library Association publishes a book in which it details the ethical responsibilities of trustees and among them trustees must respect confidential information do not reveal contents of closed session board discussions so what that means is uh, we're happy to take your comments whatever they are uh, but we can't really respond to them with any detailed information um, certainly information about what property we might have been considering, what purpose of if any, what price, or what purported price are matters that should be kept confidential. And the reasons for that is because discussing those matters publicly could tend to inflate the price, could tend to affect the sale, if any. And for those reasons, the Illinois legislature provides that those types of matters have to be discussed in closed session. And uh, the Illinois Library Association says to discuss those outside of closed session, those types of details, is really a violation of our ethical duty. So, uh, again, you can address us. 
uh, but we really can't respond to you other than to say that there has been no final decision made about this. Uh, the, there's been no vote on this matter, uh, but we're willing to listen to your comments. Excuse me, Trustee so, um, Diamond, yes. I'm not aware of what you're referring to. What do you mean referring you to? You said there's an article in the newspaper. Well, yes. That I said what? Yes, it's in today's paper. What does it say? It says, Library Trustee Carolyn Goodlick said trustees plan to discuss purchasing a home adjacent to the library to be used for a parking lot. And that is not what I said. Well, that's what you quoted as saying. And furthermore, I do have a letter that was written by you um, in An which email? you said a lot more than that. In which you a said, source was named. It wasn't me. Oh, and Carolyn, we all, all over know the it was village. you. You were sitting Excuse right me. here and you learned. Can I tell you something? I would not. I would not. We disclose have your letter. any confidential information. We have your letter right here. No, the only <coughs> thing, the, the information I disclosed is what what was reported to me. Oh, really? How in the heck yes. is anybody going to know what was discussed? You, were, you, you know what? I would like to know that. So you tell you ask your library staff you where have they been? It's all they over were Niles. even in this meeting. So how in the heck can the library? Susan say, and Greg were. Oh come on. Then you're you going to blame them for then you you don't going understand, public with all this then stuff? Then you don't understand then how you don't that is. You it. know what you should have said as soon as somebody said something to you. I'm sorry, but as a professional, as a professional, I cannot discuss this. Mm -hmm. Very official looking. Okay, no. you tell me, is it you? Are you running for office already? No, what are you saying that's on your... What's I said, on you here? Said it was Here, yesterday, that's where I learned about it. I didn't disclose anything well, from a yeah. confidential meeting. Yesterday was November 7th. No, read the, read the Just document. Just because you state that, that's read where the information. Fact. I wouldn't lie. But you would discuss an open, a closed session. I didn't discuss a closed session. I was approached. You put it By a political public. figure. You put that's it not what public. I sent to the you, newspaper. Right. Your we responsibility will. should have been to say, I'm sorry, I cannot discuss any of this. This is confidential True. information. That's all you need to do as a professional. I to this no, you person. put it on What paper. about the letter that everybody got? What about all the I repeated what somebody in a higher position than all of us told me. And if you were a professional, oh, the mayor. <laughs> there are five people in the, in the village who have called me and have contacted me. Knowing about this, and, and I never. Sorry, I cannot discuss this because this is confidential and information. That's exactly what I said. I'm not oh. able. But so to you went to the typewriter, <laughs> typed it up instead, and typed what somebody told you. Wow. Yeah, yeah, you. Right. set an executive session that you're a trustee of. Um, no, somebody. These people were approached. All five of them. So I, I think what we need to do is move on to the public comments. So uh, we have uh, three individuals who have registered for public comment. Uh, Kathy Nichols is the first person who signed in. Uh, Ms. Nichols? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Um, do you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, sure. If you would just stand up just so we can okay, hear yeah. you a little well, bit. Well, I... Uh, I do Facebook a lot. Um, and that's, you know, November 7th, I was doing my news feed and I found a post. I, from, I'm sorry. I, I found a post. No, uh, could I just ask you to stand over here oh. just so the camera, so the camera can get to oh, you? Sure. I'm sorry. And, and by the way, I think, uh, I don't know if I announced this, but we have a limit for time span three minutes. Sorry. Oh, five minutes. Sorry, five minutes. Five minutes. Well, then I won't read the whole letter. Well, okay. I'll take up a few. Well, okay. Whatever you, <laughs> well, anyway. whatever you choose to do with your five minutes. What's her name? Where are you from? Yes. Christine, oh, I'm Kathleen Nichols, and I live at 7922 North Harlem, Niles, for, since 1970. I'm a big fan of library. I use the library a lot. I think you do a marvelous job. I love everything about it, okay? Uh, I was very upset when I found this on my Facebook. I was first upset with the tone of the letter. I, I mean, I, I just, I was just embarrassed to see the words incompetence and disconnect with the residents put in in the same sentence with the with uh, with Susan and Greg because if they are anything but they aren't first of all so that's why I came first of all the tone 
is improper. The vitriol that I hear from a couple of meetings I come are, are un undeserved and, and awful. So the first thing I, then I called Tim, my friend, and I said, I didn't even hear about this. Do you need me to support this? And he was surprised that it was out in the public because he said, Kathy, how do you even know about the, the house thing? It was supposed to be in closed meeting. So I said, wow, I was on Facebook. So do you need me to support you? Like I came last year to support all the wonderful programs you put on, that uh, Star Wars thing and everything. I watched all that stuff. I loved it. So I said, well, if you need my support, because I think you could use a bigger parking lot, because I only, hardly could get into this space today. And I would never cross that street. That, 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 that parking, uh, that stop sign, which like a few minutes, a few seconds over from Waukegan and Oakton, uh, I would never. Stop light? Yeah, the second stop light that they put in. Is that where supposed to, people are supposed to cross? I don't know. I would you? That's, that's what a stop light's for. But I wouldn't take my life. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> but people, but it's a very odd stop light. I mean, it's right beyond something. I, I would never park across the street. Mm -hmm. If I come here and there was no spaces, I would just come here. Uh, I, I just would. But I anyway, used it before. So, but uh, the, but the, and the point is, but the point uh, was the was the was the tone of the letter. It was. It doesn't sound sound like people working together in a village. It's just trying to people being extremely mean to each other over an issue that wasn't even supposed to be out for us. And then, but since it was, I did discuss it with my um, son, who also lives in Niles, and my daughter-in-law. They also live in Niles, and. My daughter-in-law, they couldn't be here today, otherwise they, they would have come. Let's see if I can find this, because this stuff is, let's see. Frances is a librarian, and she also comes, uses the library a lot. And this was, uh, let's see, her take on, I sent her the library, she goes, wow, it is, this, this is Frances, she's only 39, she's a lovely girl, she represents, She's, first of all, she says, it's disappointing to see so much hate over something that is really not that consequential in the long run. Her words, her word choices are terribly inflammatory, and I'm not even sure why she's so angry about this. Uh, the Niles parking, then she goes, the Niles parking lot is often packed, not only for staff, but also for pa patrons. It's strange that she seems to want revenue for Niles, but doesn't want the revenue to be spent. So she's in favor of property taxes, but she doesn't want them to be spent on the library. I wonder where she'd rather have money spent. But laughable to think that she thinks suburbanites are going to be using Uber and biking. And, and Frances does use Uber, but she's not used Uber from, from the Renaissance where they live here. Uh, anyway, uh, and I'm sure a small, small spigot but most people are going to drive use public transportation. Uh, and yeah, I'd like to see her, whoever she is, biking today in the snow. Uh, and I don't really know how many people are using Uber or Lyft anyway. And then she said, I'd like to come to the library, but she had something to do tonight with, with where she works. So anyway, she was, again, even if you, I don't even care whether you think, care about my opinion about whether we have a parking lot or not, but I just don't like the tone of the group here. And I don't like the letters going out in the public before they're even supposed to go out there. And, um, and I love the library and everything you do with it. Your employees are happy. And when they're happy, they, are, they service. I mean, I can't tell you how many books I've looked for in the children's library. They're always coming up with it. They find it at other libraries. They, and then when I got my new Kindle for Christmas and I couldn't use it, the girls in the tech department helped me out to figure out how I could get all these books on my Kindle that I'm reading. And I'm reading without having to pay for them. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Yes. Thank, thank you very you. much. Well, the, I love the library. Okay. Uh, our next uh, speaker is, is it uh, Myrna? Myrna? Uh, Gillespie? Gillespie. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Go right ahead. I think I'll of this is a little precise. perception. It's in some ways. Um, and it's I've been hearing, uh, you know, about the perception. Could you please introduce Oh, Myrna Gillespie, 8460 Chester. I'm sorry? Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah. So anyway, I obviously I've heard that the board's considering, you know, pushing this, uh, this what I feel like, it's like ramming through a, a lease or purchase of some property. And where I'm getting that from is actually from your agenda. I pulled out your agenda, um, and when I looked at it, I noticed it said purchase or lease, which I found it kind of a strange thing if we're, ta I don't know, again, if we're talking about a parking lot or whatever. Um, I, I, I got concerned because I thought, well, you really can't, you know, purchase or lease, I mean, you, 
why would you lease a house for parking? I don't know. Yeah, I just, um, just just to clarify that that language is taken right out of the statute. So it's mm -hmm. it's the statutory okay. language that we need to use to put in the statute. Or it was just the or. It that's wasn't why, the and. It was the like, or. So, so I was go concerned ahead, go ahead, thinking, oh my God, are we not talking about looking to put in some sort of a, a, a branch or satellite or something? And then I saw it's funny, Sue. I'm sorry, Sue. I just noticed that you're the branch director. Is it? Um, the executive director. It, it says on your on the website it says branch director or something. It's kind of interesting. It was funny. So you know it's kind of like all these weird things. Anyway, so um, I guess you're not obviously leasing the house next door. It would be a purchase. But I was concerned about is there some sort of a, a lease also being talked about? So that's that's been cleared up. So thank you about that. Um, I. I I understand now after you spoke also about a little bit about the why it has to go into executive session. So because of certain things with that, but it bothers me also that it's kind of sneaking up on everybody. And my biggest concern is, is this going to be then voted on tonight? So you're going to go into executive session and then we're all going to leave and then because we don't want to sit around and then are you going to come out and vote on this in the dark? Nobody knows about it. And I know you're afraid of the price going up and things, but that, that to me it feels sneaky while I understand some of the reasoning it just feels funny it feels like people are trying to hide something maybe you're not you had some legitimate reasons and, and I get that but um, that that's I think the biggest thing that I was was worried about okay so that was the first thing and then just very quickly, actually there were three things. Um, it was just about including cash payments related to health insurance as IR, IMRF earnings. I'm kind of concerned, is this going to increase the amount of pension people get when they retire? Because it, it's right on the agenda. It says we're going to talk about including cash payments related to health insurance as IMRF earnings. It's right on the agenda. That I saw on the website, obviously. So I, I didn't know what that meant. And at the end of the day, I'm concerned that pensions will be going up for that. Right, okay, so so that is a big concern. I, 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 I think it's nice that people have pensions, but I feel like we're padding it somehow. I feel like we're in the city of Chicago sometimes, we gotta pad it at the end so people get more money. And then um, the last thing is, I really had a hard time finding the agendas on your website and the board. I had to go on Google and do a Google search to have it come up. I don't know what I was missing, but I don't find it an easy read to say, you know, board meetings or trustee yeah. info. So it might be something you want to look at in the future. So maybe okay. just a little bit Thank easier. Thank you. Is it uh, under transparency? No, or is a, it uh, uh, FOIA and transparency hot link on the front page. Yeah, I if you click on it, you get yeah. access to every single... It's there, but... It, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not it like sticking out, like board meeting meetings or things like that. So just, just a thought, you know. For, uh, yeah, that, that's a good thought, and maybe uh, our webmaster could look at that and yeah. make it more, okay. more clear. Uh, Thank you for your time. It, it, it is open Thank there. It you. should be available to anyone who wants to look at it. Thank you. Uh, our, our third speaker is Susan Schoenfeld. Susan, would you like to step over here, please? My name is Susan Schoenfeld and I live at 6900 West Keeney Street in Niles, Illinois. Our library is a refuge of gathering space of a laboratory and a lifeline to the world of information. This institution serves all residents and it's heart of our community, but I'm concerned about the purchase of the home. I feel it's going to take and values down for the homes itself and the community that it serves. We do need to change in simple minds to remember that the residents are just as important as anybody else is. But we have to keep the safety of our children and the knowledge of our children all to update our life. And by buying a home of 7,609 7 square feet to knock down and demolish a home to make a parking lot does not make any sense. And I can just say one thing that we've been a resident for Niles for many years and my daughters have truly enjoyed the library. 
with Miss Jennifer and Lolly Pop and Miss Shelley and all of them, and they really mean a lot to us, but we do not see the value of unpacking them to home so where the parents can enjoy family and the residents around us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, those were the only requests that we received for public comment. So we'll move on to the treasurer's report. Uh, Tim. Okay. Uh, October is the fourth month of the fiscal year. We are 33.3% of the way through our uh, budget. Uh, and again, once more, we have a truly non-spectacular uh, financial report in that everything is very, very clear and just we're, we're running under budget just about everywhere. Uh, as we go through this, page nine, our revenues are greater than expected, uh, but we have discussed it uh, during last month's meeting. Uh, our salaries are on budget. There's really nothing that I need to report on that uh, particular section. Page 10, library materials are higher than budget through their subscription-based cost. But we also discussed that at our previous board meeting. Uh, operating revenues are uh, running under budget at 30%. Uh, there is an item to note on page 10, uh, the internet charges under library operating expenses. If you see, it's actually um, a negative 5,485, which is a negative 13%. So, you know, but we're making money on that. And that's due to the rebates, the E rate rebate that we get from Illinois. Uh, so, that explains that particular line. It's actually the federal government. Oh, it's not the Illinois. I'm sorry. E rate is federal. And, and if I might just add to that, since it's a federal thing, takes a lot of work. <laughs> so sure. it's not an automatic thing by any means. It's there's a ton of work that goes into getting that money back. Is that uh, it's going to do we know if that's going to continue next year? Uh, uh, they're phasing it out for communications but not so much for uh, internet access or equipment to uh, deliver internet to uh, people to patrons of the library. So we might still benefit from it? Yeah, we'll, we'll continue to see in those categories, but the uh, there was a small yeah. amount that was paid this year for communications mm -hmm. against our telephone bill that you don't see here because it was uh, it was that small that the telephone bill was still uh, still bigger than that. And uh, uh, that's going away, is what we understand. <clears throat> well, we do appreciate the information. Thank you very much. Uh, page 11, general and admins, uh, we're running under budget at 28%. So we're going to go in that category. In our uh, vehicle operations, we had talked about that at previous board meetings. Uh, it's running slightly over here. It's running a little bit over. And I have really nothing to note on page 12 overall. Uh, you know, we talked about the audits before, and we talked about the liability insurance before, and everything else is running pretty close to budget. And page 13, the workers' compensation, uh, that was a one-time payment. We talked about that as well. So um, as far as I can see, the total expenditures are running a tad under, but you know, right, right on target. Okay, hey, does anyone have any question about the financial reports? Um, I, I want to make one comment on the bottom of page uh, 13, the last line, mm -hmm. um, the lower right-hand corner. It's kind of a uh, interesting number, it's a negative uh, 456 percent. So what that number is supposed to do is measure the variance uh, between uh, the year-to-date um, uh, the year-to-date actual uh, numbers and the annual budget. So our, what we're seeing right now is a net surplus in uh, column 4 of 1,014,448 the uh, uh, the budget was uh, drafted and approved, showing uh, a deficit of uh, neck of uh, two hundred twenty-two thousand six hundred three. If you divide the uh, two twenty-two six hundred three into the into the million o fourteen four forty-eight, you get four hundred and fifty-six percent. And because because um, because the the budget is negative. 
you need that to be a negative 456 percent. So that's the genesis of that number. I will say um, that on an interim basis, because you know we get all the property taxes at one time, and you know against the uh, a rateable amount of expenses every month, that looking at that number um, isn't very. It doesn't give you very much information. What gives you the information, I think, is the comparison on the uh, expenditure side, looking at um, looking at total expenditures as opposed to a net surplus and deficit. So, just like that. Okay. All right. Um, any other uh, questions or comments about that? No, I don't know. I entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills. Uh, actually, with your permission, yes. I have a comment. I okay. Can I get the okay. All right. So I received a document from several residents that protects Greg Prince, our director of finance, and Susan Lemke, our library director, in an extremely unfair and negative manner. And I feel a responsibility as the treasurer of this board to speak to their character in light of this document. In the past three plus years as treasurer, I have found Greg Prince to be unfailingly kind, patient, knowledgeable, and extremely competent in all his duties related to his position with the library. He fulfills his responsibilities to this board with a grace and composure that I find truly admirable. Every month, I'm making a statement. When you have a chance, you can talk. Every month, our financial reports are presented in a clear and orderly format. Expenditures are fully explained, and all our financial questions are answered with patience and professionalism, often in the face of sarcasm, innuendo, hostility, and unwarranted accusations. As we see through our yearly financial audits, the financial health of this organization remains robust and sound, and without the slightest hint of impropriety, much of this is due to Greg's diligence over the financial dealings of this library. To suggest that Greg Fritz is anything other than a competent professional is not only an insult to him, but to all of us who view Greg as a highly valued and much appreciated member of our organization. Susan Lemke has likewise been on warranty insulted in this document. Anyone who would take but a moment to view a typical director's report in any board meeting packet would immediately realize the vast variety of accomplishments of this library on a daily basis. Susan continues to lead and develop an enthusiastic and competent staff under her direction, the library grows better every day. Susan presents the accomplishments of the library to the board in a clear and concise manner and speaks to all facets of this library's operation with a complete understanding of the complexities and in a professional, patient, respectful tone despite the disrespect she is often subjected to by certain members of our board. Susan continually comports herself with a grace and composure that a number of board members, myself included, can only hope to one day achieve. I condemn in the strongest words possible, the affront to the reputation of these two fine members of our library, and I say that the poison in the pen that was used to write these words points more to the poison in the soul of the person who wrote them rather than anyone else associated with this organization. The author of this document should be ashamed of the grotesque subversion of the truth in its representation of our valued employees and should immediately and publicly apologize to both Greg and Susan and to the larger extent all the people of our community. This document indicates that its author does not support the libraries elected to do. There is no place on this or any other board for this type of behavior. And I say to the author of this document, if you are so dissatisfied, it is time to step aside, as the primary duty of all members of the board is to work together for the betterment of the library, its staff, and the community. That concludes my financial report. I have a question. Yes. So, so what was the... Who, who, who wrote the letter? Are you, are you talking about some people who wrote letters? Or are you talking about the newspaper well, article? I, I do and know. if you can't cut it out over there. <coughs> well, I'm sorry. It was already mentioned about two or three times. Right. I thought you know. she was talking about letters that were written in. There's comments that are written in to the library. Are they not? And so that's why I was asking the question. Now, if I it, it, right away I get comments, laughs from you all. I'm the time. sorry, it's your turn to talk. So. All right, so thank you. I just like so I, just I, I was unclear. I did not hear your reason for, for your your comments at the very beginning. And that's why I wanted to ask a question. I didn't want to talk over you, but that's why I wanted to ask a question. Did, did you want? Did you want to know what the statements were in the newspaper? No, I I, I believe anybody okay. has ever seen uh, what's in the newspaper. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, and, and again, it, it's a you know, uh, 
I, I would be um, uh, concerned that I, I'm trying to understand where I cannot get up before a meeting and make public comments, and, and where somebody can, in the middle of a meeting, read a, a whole dissertation mm -hmm. and, and, and make comments where, when I can't stand up and make com public comments. At the well, of the I felt okay. it's a, it, it's I, 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 I don't, it, it, it shouldn't be a, a, a think or a, 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 a question. It should be either you can or you can't. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt as a position as the treasurer of this board that uh, I needed to make a statement in defense of our financial director. Well, and, it, it, and you included more than I more, more than one maybe trustee. I should, maybe I should not have. Yeah. You know, well, I didn't so, include any trustees actually. Well, I think you said more than. Uh, I'd like to get a copy of your 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 uh, your letter, your comment that you just read. I and think, uh, certainly, you know, fair. you can make comments during other parts of the meeting. It's just we try to reserve the public comment for members of the. Public. So. It was, I, <laughs> I, again, I, I'll, if I have to FOIA it, I'll FOIA it, but I'd like a copy of what you just read. Because I, I think it's FOIA. Huh? I think it's FOIA. This is my document. It just was recorded. It, it was, was just recorded. You can know it's recorded. Recorded. But I, I can request, I, I would think that I should be able to request something that was read up to, to the library function. Well, then you have to ask yeah, It's not part of the record. Here for they, they don't have it. Kind of. How could, they, how could they give it to you? You know, I, I, guess, I guess, Tim, if you're not ashamed of, of providing the letter, then I'm just wondering how you could possibly put it. So I think whether or not the document is subject to FOIA is something that will have to be addressed later it's on. Such a such sort of obstructionist. It's just, it's really just, just unclear. Uh, I mean, we don't require all of our guests to turn over copies of what they've read. read to us, I mean, and people can just you no. Know, but people read have them. asked me for for a copy. This is uh, matter of fact. I think it was my buddy Patty that said, "Did you bring a copy mm -hmm. for all of us when I had?" Well, you were reading things. something, and we were interested but because you had nice. some good points. So, so in this case, it's okay to ask for it. Well, in this okay case, it's ask, not okay. It's to ask okay to ask, ask for it. You, it's okay okay. Okay. No, you didn't give it to us. We yeah. just asked because you had some interesting. Points we thought right. would be worth going into. So, so in this case, so in this case, it's okay. It's okay to ask. Case, it's no, we didn't say you couldn't ask. We didn't say you couldn't ask. That's fine. Ask. 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 All right, let's move on. Uh, now I'll entertain. It's unfortunate. I'm, I'm just terribly to concerned that, that I was being referenced in that in that document as well. The terrible things that. A All couple right. of trustees have said about right. these people. Then. Well, we on. all know the 5 to 2 voting record of most uh, votes that go on in this place. All right, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $240,484.02, payroll expenses of $283,829.37, and special reserve expense of $1,640,000. Six, uh, excuse me, sorry, of $1,640 for a total monthly expense of $545,953.39. Do I have a second motion? Yes, motion. Second. All right. Second. All right. Uh, any questions or comments regarding the motion on the floor? Okay, um, hearing none, uh, may the roll call? Okay. Yes. Carolyn? No. Dennis? We have three other bills, so yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. All right, the next item on the agenda is the director's mm -hmm. report. Um, Susan, do yeah. you have a report for us? I do. A bunch of it is obviously in writing. Um, I did want to call your attention, if you have not had a chance to read it yet, to the comments that I put in this time from staff members, which I found um, really very touching to see how passionate they are about their work. They, so where, where should we where uh, well, I, What I did, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I had done it clearly enough, so let okay. me just explain that um, right. each time that it is in bold, it's that is a staff comment, and I also tried to label them as staff comments. Um, and they're just about why they are working in the library and how 
how they feel about the work that they do I see. and the difference that they feel like they're making in the community. They really are just very, very passionate about the work that they do. And I thought that I would share that with you because you don't get a chance to talk with them. That I often. would. Yeah, I like to I like the it. reason why they switched over from all the jobs. Mm -hmm. It was very nice. Yeah, my favorite part is the one that says, I see that children grow from babes in arms to toddlers to kindergarten mm -hmm. and grow into young men and women and books built their minds and we helped raise them up mm -hmm. because in the village it takes to raise a child, there should always be a library. I just thought no. that was very nice. <laughs> and if I can unfortunately make it an anonymous survey, sorry. I thought there are just some lovely facts here. So I thought it might inspire you a little bit too. And of course I do want to call your attention on right under the calendar to the last one, which was, I would like the board to know I appreciate their willingness to volunteer their time. So, you got a little bit of luck there, too. Thank um, you. Thank yeah. you. So, let's see. Moving on. Um, you know, I, I don't want to belabor the comments that we've already talked about. You know, obviously I do not appreciate having my name be searched to the many members of the community um, really, frankly, frankly, it was defamatory. I particularly don't like having Greg's name besmirched to members of the community when I feel like he does a wonderful job for the library. And just one very tiny example of that. Um, in 2011, before Greg arrived, and when, before we started our construction, when our um, special reserve fund was fully loaded, getting ready to do that construction, we had $12,000 in it, and that year, 12 million, oh yeah, tiny detail. <laughs> money like, is any good. Those zeros make a big difference. Yeah, those little differences. <laughs> so 12 million. And, um, and that year we earned interest of $55,000. So that's not bad, but it's not fantastic. This year, according to the audit that we just got, we have $8 million, $8 million in the bank. And Greg, uh, put together investments that added up to $144,510. And that's not because the stock market did great. It, he has it just invested very conservatively but very wisely in a way that there are slattered CDs and it, it just is a very smart way of doing it that nobody had done that way before. It's just one tiny example of the kind of care and thought that he puts into the work that he does. Um, the, I wanted to point out that Greg and I are the ones that had the idea of paying down our liability on IMRF so that now our rate is below the rate that we were paying before, before we had a pension. It's down from that substantially. And I did want to um, point out that Carolyn in the article and in a letter that she wrote refers to our program attendance being very, very low. I actually think that having attendance in October of over 6,000 people at programs is fantastic. I think it's something to be proud of. But more to the point, she refers to a figure of 11%, which I assume is the percentage what 6,000 would be of 58,000 people in the district. And I would say if they all came to a program in the month of October, we would have had to have 1,871 attendance each day. And our large meeting room holds 120 when it's small children crammed in in the front. It's just, just, there's no way to do it. There's not enough room, there's not enough staff. It's a physical impossibility, and it's silly. We do a wonderful job on programming here. I'm proud of the programming that we do. I don't understand why anyone would say we don't do enough good programs. And I, for one, really appreciated the end uh, Arianne Carey's report in my director's report, she explains that she had three programs last month that she refers to, I think, as duck eggs, meaning they were zeros. They, they were not successful. Goose One eggs. of them was a goose eggs. Yeah. <laughs> not foul. And I actually really appreciated that she uh, explained, you know, one of them is a special needs program, an adaptive hour. For, for children, and that's just the kind of thing where it takes a while to find the audience, for the audience to hear about it. It's not going to be a high percentage of the district. It's going to, by its very nature, be a very small program at its best, but it's intended for special needs children. So that was one of the examples. She had several others, and, and she explained that, well, you know, you try this, you try that. We might repeat this later, but this one we probably won't. And that's how they do all of their programming. And then there just are some programs that are designed to be small programs. There are, you know, you don't want to be in an Excel class with 50 people. That's going to be a small class. So anyway, I just wanted to address those things. Because um, I just, you know, it, it hurts my heart to hear 
the staff and I our work being demeaned. Yes. So, so again, uh, I, I think in some cases uh, uh, things are being called out, and uh, uh, I think Greg has uh, a, a great talent at making the right recommendations to pay things down and to do certain things. Now, there's an extreme disagreement on whether or not we wanted to do an IMRF. And if we didn't do an IMRF, we wouldn't have to pay down that sum of money and then follow it up the next year with another sum of money. So I'm not taking anything away from Greg's very great skills at, at trying to you know, make us solve it and, and, and get us to a better place with investments. Uh, I think there's some, some strong disagreements on certain, other, on certain things that occur that that's where I hope interpretation isn't made that we think that people are bad people. I mean, I have strong disagreement with the huge number of programs we have, but that's my opinion. If we didn't have those programs, we wouldn't have a need for a potential, I don't know, somebody might be thinking about knocking down a house, but we wouldn't need that extra parking because as we, as we progress more towards a, a technology atmosphere, we're getting more stuff online. But with programs, you're bringing people here. Well, you know, so those are those are just disagreements. Those those right. are, those are my opinions, and it's not to say that you're a bad person. Uh, but I, and you're not saying that I'm incompetent, and you're not saying that we're mismanaging, and that's what I'm trying okay. to address. Right yeah, now. just as long as yeah. I don't think a, we object to you voicing an opinion is, about is, whether or not we should is, have clear, there's there's a disagreement on some ideas. Yeah, no, I I totally get that, and I respect yeah. that. You were elected to represent your point of view, and yep. there is nothing wrong with that. I just don't like being called incompetent and that I'm mismanaging the library's resources. Moving on, um, we put at your places the Chamber of Commerce Christmas party information, and so please do get that into Diane if you want to go because it is ten dollars cheaper if we make it in by the uh, early bird deadline. Before you move on, I have some questions about the director's report. Oh, well, I'm, I'm still in my director's report. Oh, okay. So, um, okay, I'm going to pass to Greg now because you had asked for um, uh, costs on how much it would cost to do a survey in Chapter 1, and Greg has some information for you about that. So, um, uh, there's, a, there's a number of arcane rules that we're dealing with with the post office. Um, the most notable is that if you're sending something through the mail, it has to be a certain weight. So, for example, you cannot take a page and clip something and put a stamp on it and send it because it's not heavy enough and it will be destroyed in the process. So, um, the, the same goes for the pages for the stock that we use in uh, Chapter 1. We don't have anything heavy enough, either a cover or, or anything like that, to, uh, to facilitate that. So uh, what what uh, Vizzo has suggested to us is making a uh, postcard. And the postcard is uh, uh, four by ten and a half, I believe. And it would be stitched into the center. Uh, they say stitched, stapled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it like the yeah, answer? Yeah. Yeah, but it would be stapled and then perforated in one, yeah. one, one corner. On one side, it would be addressed to us with the business, uh, with the return business license on it. And on the back would be whatever questions we wanted to ask with whatever checkoffs we wanted to, uh, to put in there. Um, that, for one issue, would be just under $1,300, uh, $1,299.34. Okay? Now, if for every for every card that we get back, we pay two things. Well, first of all, we actually pay three things. First thing we pay is $225 for a business return license. The second thing we pay is 35 cents, which is the postage. And then the third thing we pay is 84 cents for the handling. Okay? So on a piece-by-piece -piece basis, it's uh, $1.19 per return 
that we got. Okay? Uh, plus the $225. If you look at, for example, getting 100 items back, that uh, uh, taking the cost uh, from Vizzo, the license, plus $1.19 per uh, item, we end up with $1,643, or about 16 bucks per return. Uh, maybe that's too low. Okay, if Wait, they do how it, much per, per? $16.42. For each? Yes. For each little for response? A, at, at 100. Because you're only expecting 100 bags. Because okay. so, at $1,300 to send it. If we get 500 back, obviously the cost goes down because your fixed costs are spread uh, more thinly. Mm -hmm. Thinly it goes to $4.24. And if you get 999, it goes down further to 272. 999 is a funny number. Uh, because for item number 1,000, <laughs> for item number 1,000, we have to have um, a license that costs an additional $465. Okay. okay? So that 1,000 uh, item will cost us $467.72, basically. Is that the 225 or an in addition to the 220. So that's if you have a thousand returned? If we have a thousand returns. Okay. So I'm, I want to put some of these numbers in context. The first one, the first thing is what we actually did. Okay. We did uh, three survey types. Okay. For four months, we went into programs and we asked people how they heard about us by show of hands. Um, and we uh, we got 1,187 responses. And if you remember from the presentation that Sasha did, the, there were a number of different um, ways that they heard about us. Um, by far, far and away, the, the most popular was chapter one. Some on the website, uh, some by email, uh, some from posters that are hung in, in the building. But we have 1,200 responses on um, we did one-to-one -one surveys where um, we spent a half an hour actually uh, going through like a treasure hunt. Uh, find this, find that, how easy is it to navigate to give us some feedback on, on, its, uh, uh, on its format. Uh, we did 12 of those. And then finally, um, uh, finally we did the uh, survey monkey uh, where we got 205 responses. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, the program surveys that I was talking about, raise your hand, tell us how you heard it, that was 970. The total of the three numbers is 1,187. So we got about 1,200 responses. The other uh, piece of information that I want to bring up is that in the um, 2017 summer issue of Chapter 1, we put in a coupon for a, uh, for a giveaway. Um, the giveaway was a uh, cloth bag, a book bag, for all intents and purposes, with our logo on it, and it was to promote the name change and so forth. Uh, so that went directly into 22,500 homes, or you know, whatever the mailing list adds up to. We got 73 responses. So, you know, yeah. so putting something into Chapter One, um, you know, and. It's the easiest thing to base, you know, to to do is all you have to do is bring in chapter one, we tear the bottom of the page off and give you a bag. That never that only made it back seven or three times. So we may not even reach a hundred responses if we do this. We may be, you know, in the sub one hundred, maybe fifty right. or seventy five, right. because they have to tear it out, they have to fill it, they have to remember to walk it to or, or drive it to yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're, a mailbox. Yeah, the response is, is going to be minimal. Just uh, on any type of survey, your, your response is yeah. minimal. And that's why I was trying to understand what's the total cost? You know, we have a, a certain set cost for sending it out already. Yeah, well, the printing cost is, is, yeah. is the largest yeah. cost uh, uh, for the most part. So, so a, a bottom line then is it's like uh, your, your total cost, if you got under a thousand is going to be roughly, you know, I got several so numbers. Twenty five hundred dollars. Nine hundred ninety nine is two thousand seven hundred thirteen. 
You know? yeah. And if you do 100, if you only get 100 responses, it's 1,640. Yeah. Can I ask a question? These costs that you um, mentioned, bless you, um, $12.99 for the one issue, these are the costs of Visiographic? Uh, to Visiographic, yes. Okay, and also the $225 for a business return license, is that because of the post office or because of doing it through Visiographic? That's the post, that's what the post office charges. So they would charge us but for they also business. charge uh, they also charge four hundred and sixty five dollars for the additional license if we break a thousand returns, um, and then they also charge the thirty five cents in uh, postage and the eighty four cents in handling. Okay, That's so, all post office. So what I'm bringing out is that we would be labeled a business. I thought our mailings. It's commonly called a business return. It's not that we're a business. It's commonly called a business return. So that's there's only one price. So because our our chapter one goes out not as a business mailing, isn't it? As like a, it's a nonprofit. Uh, okay. It's a nonprofit. So business. and there's no way that there's a card that would be less for a nonprofit. It's just the business. That's why it's catching my eye. There's only one type, and it's called a business return. We asked. Uh, we said we're the library and we don't pay taxes, we're a governmental agency, and what would it cost to do this? So they gave us the price that people cost to do Okay. And um, just out of curiosity, four by ten and a half, is that like almost the whole length of the magazine? Is that what he was thinking? Well, it, um, well, the, the ten, ten and a half, uh, you know, it's a eight and a half by eleven. 11 so. Uh, so it's uh, so it's pretty long. He wasn't sure uh, how many questions we were trying to put on, but I mean, it, nothing really changes. No, the know, price is exorbitant. I agree. No, you're absolutely right. And then I had one other question. You said you had twelve hundred responses. Yeah. From no, no, um, so I, I actually one thousand one hundred eighty-seven. Because when Sasha was presenting the information um, about the surveys he performed, he did mention he talked with 12 people, the one-on-one, -on -one, they were almost 30 minutes long. But as far as, um, was it the Survey Monkey, was that the one? No, there was another one in the library where he said, because of some of them not being residents, I think his number was as low as 134, but I don't. He never mentioned 1,200 responses. Is this something online? No, that, uh, no, that was uh, take. That was a, a, a survey that we did over four months, uh, asking attendees in the room to a program to raise their hands and you know if they learned about the program by email, if they learned learned about the program uh, by looking it up on the website, uh, chapter one. Uh, posters in the library, word of mouth, you know, so we were trying to figure out what was important and, and where the information, where people were coming from. Did this occur after Sasha presented? No, because no, those numbers weren't first, included. They it were included, um, but... Not, not, his numbers were really small, not 1,200. For raising your hand, mm -hmm. he mentioned that, but they were nowhere 970, It was 970 either. for that. Because I have the numbers at home, and, and those numbers weren't quoted during his presentation. But anyway, so it is what it is. It's just, it's just, it's difficult to uh, see where they came from because I, I didn't hear them when he was presenting. But obviously, the cost is too expensive to try to figure out how many people actually benefit from the mailing. But what about cutting the mailing um, for all the condo buildings that you claim they're just throwing them on the floor, would that save us any money? Well, we don't actually know if they're doing that or not. That's anecdotal. We would need to do some research on that. I thought that's what but, but what we were asked for tonight was just to come back with that information. So mm -hmm. I'm going to move on because I have a whole other thing I have to cover, and then there's more on the agenda. All right. Um, it, I don't know. I have some comments about the people record. think it's really hey, worth while. Okay, so please let that. me know when you're done. That's not That sounds okay. right. I'm sorry. Just it, from what I'm hearing, it doesn't sound like people I think it's really worthwhile to send out uh, a mail. Based on those costs, no. Okay. Well, based on the cost and the return that you're going to get, it's, it's, yeah. it just doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Different All right. Process. All right, I'm starting some papers going around. Uh, while I do that, let me just mention that we had our two AED machines installed. 
and I, I think it's the more people that know where we have AED machines, the more likely they are to be used. So there's one here at the end of the third floor, right as you come up the stairs. It's sort of the one for the third floor and the second floor, and then there's one uh, right by the hold shelves in patron services. And a number of the staff were tra trained on using it, and the electronic defibrillator thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's, and we, as we were reminded again this week on the training from the company that sold the machines, what? it's you don't use it when somebody's having a heart attack, you use it you in the cardiac arrest. arrest. So if somebody drops to the ground. Yeah. You know, the, the, the automated <coughs> defibrillator, if you don't hook it up right, it doesn't work. Susan, that's for staff use. Uh, it's, well, if it's an emergency, anybody goes and grabs it. Okay. The directions on it, on the ones right. I've yep. been trained on, were relatively simple. Yeah, yeah. No, and it talks you through a lot, too. So anyway, um, I need to bring you up to date on this year's per capita grant because I have to make that application. And as always, you will have homework. I always like assigning the trustees homework. Uh, so the first sheet here, this one, gives you the fiscal year 2019 requirements. These are the things that we have to accomplish to be qualified for a per capita grant from the state. Mm -hmm. um, we've already turned in the annual report, so that is done. The um, standards review, I will have to go through with my staff, and that's the second piece of information here, but it came out of the green book that I think you all have, Standards for Illinois Public yes. Libraries. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be reviewing our service of reference and reader's advisory. So <coughs> coming back to you next month with our findings of whether we're meeting all of the standards for that. Mm -hmm. uh, the third thing that has to be done is, is, is your homework from your trustee facts file book that you all have. Mm -hmm. This yeah. says third edition, this says fourth. I know, I, and I double checked because I've held on to the third edition because they keep referring to it here, but it, it was identical. So, okay, yeah. cool. So um, we'll be reading up on intellectual freedom, which is to do with censorship and things like that. Um, Let's see, planning, which is strategic planning, six, 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 yeah. human resources, facilities, and budget, budgeting and financial management. So please let me know when you've read that. Yeah. It's, uh, it's on here, oh, chapter 6 that. through 10. Oh, thank you. And we're supposed to let you know when we've read Let me know that. when you've done that. Um, and then everybody has to watch an online education seminar or webinar, I will send you the links to those. They are all right. things on things like work. this year the focus is on working with people with disabilities. So there are um, presentations you can watch on working with autistic people and low vision and all kinds of different disabilities. And, um, and then uh, we actually get off easy on the last one for outreach, becoming familiar with the Illinois Veterans History Project because we were a founding member of the of the National uh, Veterans History Project. Great. So that that is all I have for my director's report. So Carolyn, you have some questions? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah an another one actually. Um, regarding the per capita grant, do we know how much we might be getting, or is that varies year to year? Um, it's been as low as fifty, and it's been as high as a dollar twenty-five per person. So we won't know until it's finalized, until correct? February-ish, yeah. You know, I was just going to mention, because I know it came up um, um, later on after our budget process, maybe um, we might want to consider whatever the amount is, deducting it from our budget, which would help us at least keep our costs down and it's extra money. But can we so maybe them? something to consider, what, you know, if it comes through. It, it, it's, it's in the revenue of the budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do, we do estimate, we, you know, we hear what they're saying it will probably be when we go to the legislative breakfast in February. And so we hear it's likely to be in this range, and so that's what we put in as a revenue outline. So it's not an expense, it's a revenue. Right, well I'm just saying, since it's additional, we could cut something. It, it would just look great to the taxpayers. But uh, moving on, um, I did have a couple questions. First of all, your director's report is incredible. It's, I, I'm very impressed with all the explanations of all the departments, of the programs, the services we offer. It's actually 14 pages long. It's, it's extremely thorough. And what I would like to see is, I'd like to continue seeing all of this information, especially with pictures of individuals who attend. But I was wondering if we could maybe extract it from the director's report and label it like library highlights for October 
or something of that nature, and then take this information and also have it on the website, maybe as a um, um, almost like um, like a slide presentation with music for all these comments and all these different patrons who you, who've attended will be recognized by people that know them. I just think it, it's great information and it's kind of hidden in our director's report. So that was just a thought I had about that. Okay, thanks. Mm. Think about that. And then also in this 14 page document, there's like tidbits of information, like there were reimbursements or savings, um, some staff numbers, I think some information that Dennis requested about I think staff, employees. That information I think is critical, especially the financial aspect of it, the numbers that you sort of put in here. And I think instead of us searching through here to find it, maybe you could include them in our board packet with the financial information. Or, what, for example, Dennis's request for some sort of staffing information that you provided could be included as an agenda item and then the information attached. And if he's requiring further explanation, we could discuss it. But things get hidden in here, and sometimes it's information that as a board we need to move on, and, and then it's lost. So that was something else I wanted to mention. And then lastly, I would like to see your director's report separate from all of this hard work that our staff does. I mean, I think it's great. It's all about how hard they work to provide programs and, and then you know plan them, provide them, and then they filter the information to you and it gets labeled director's report. I'd like to see your report separate from all they do and maybe you could focus on the leadership things you're doing and that's what we could see in your report. Kind of like this report could be divided into three different sections. Um, but that was my suggestion. And then I just had um, a couple of questions. On page 35, you mentioned that I think somebody contacted Glenbrook <coughs> South High School, <coughs> the librarian there, and she was able to provide a list of the students who go to Glenbrook South, but live in our library district and um, patron services or, or, or they, they were sent some sort of application and patron services is receiving some responses you know I know we're talking about uh, trying to understand that north end could we possibly receive a list of these addresses so we know what area we're talking about and maybe how many kids actually did respond to this um, uh, card or application that she sent out. I'd like to see that because I think it would really help us. Um, I have a and then, um, excuse me, I'm uh, almost done. Manager. Thank you. And then under um, staff notes, um, let's see, there was some mention about uh, the board should know. Oh, where is it? Something about. Yeah. Oh, here it is. The board should know that the technical skills of librarianship are just a point of departure. The key, the real key is being able to engage with patrons. And that is definitely true. Um, you know what, it, it, it reminds me of, I sent you an email, there was an issue about a month ago, and I wanted to discuss it at the last board meeting. I didn't hear from you, but it had to do with somebody posted something, I think, in the teen section or the youth section, and there was some disagreement in whether or not it should have been posted. And, you know, that's, that's one subject to discuss, but my issue was that actually the person who confronted the patron um, informed the patron that she was a that she had a master's in library science and she knows what she's doing and it just inflamed the situation. So I wanted to 
discuss that with you, but um, since it was mentioned that yes, it is important for our staff to be able to engage, that really sparked some controversy. And I happened to get a few calls about that one. But um, I'm not trying to diminish kudos. I mean, this is an incredible explanation of everything we do. Um, and then um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the statistics, um, which actually um, I used to explain that participation in our programs is not high. Actually, I think one of our residents brought in similar information and he was at 5%, but this report shows us at 11%. But more accurately, I, I had a question about some of the programs. And what I mentioned was there are programs that aren't library sponsored. For example, um, I'm just trying to get a better handle on these numbers. Um, there was something from OCC, Open Community College, English as a Second Language. They had 475 people come here within a month. Mm -hmm. So are they renting space? No, we, space? Are, we have a partnership with them. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, host the programs for them to be able to reach our, for many of our own patrons teaching them English. We That's a great, the program. Oakton, uh, it's a volunteer program. Cindy, you are more familiar with yes. this. Can you talk to this a little bit? Yes. It's a, uh, Oakton has the uh, core of volunteers and it's a partnership that we, um, we serve on the literacy committee, um, advisory committee with Oakton Community College. And so it's a partnership to bring the ESL classes to our patrons um, so that we don't have to hire the instructors to teach the language classes to our patrons. So it's a partnership with Oakton where they bring in the volunteers to teach our patrons. So it's not Oakton Community College's English as a Second Language program? Um, it, because that's what it states here. So I'm yes, thinking it's their program, they use our facility. Yes. Okay, so they have 475 people coming to their program, not necessarily 475 Niles residents. Not all of them are Niles residents, that's true. Okay, and I'm just trying to figure out 475 people in one month, is that three classes, I mean? It is it's twice a week. Twice a week. Yeah, in the large, in the commons, large okay, commons. So like eight 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 times. Times. Okay, so that's like eight times. Okay. It was nine times according to the statistics. Yeah, so it depends on, you know, if there's an extra half a week. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is these are huge numbers of mm -hmm. participants, and, and, and it's an outside source. We also have publicly hosted programs, um, Home Depot, Golf Main Park District, Golf Mill Mall. And what I'm trying to say is, um, some of these numbers are pretty high, and that, that, that certainly causes a heck of a lot of congestion as well. well but all of those, those you just mentioned were actually all, it says community engagement, meaning they were out of the building. So they went out to the park district, they went out to the fire safety event at Home Depot. These were all the boobash at the Gulf Main Park District. This was out of the building. So the people, the 100 people who went to Home Depot were not, they weren't in our building. The, our staff member went out there and and did a program with them out there. So we host. So we don't host them here. No, that one. Anything that says uh, community engagement programs is out of the building. Oh, so if we hosted something at Home Depot. It's for people at Home Depot. Is that what they? Well, mean? it's usually that they're having an event and they have asked us to come and, and participate in some way. And we're always very happy to do that when we can. We can't always spare the staff. And I just want to mention that the statistics are all pulled in the way that they will feed directly into our annual report that we have to give to the state. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, we want those numbers to already be in the form that they need to be. And so we go by whatever the state says we should be counting. That's what we're counting. Oh, sure. But I'm saying for in terms of us having a better understanding right here. of numbers here and, and well, that was another thing I noticed. Well, you know, there's been some concern about the numbers seem to be exaggerated. And um, there was an event, is it the Shakespeare event? I think 80 people attended. This is a perfect example. And um, after the Shakespeare event, 42 people stayed to discuss the play. But we counted it as 84 plus 40, when in fact it was only 84 people total, and then some left. 
So what I'm trying to say is these numbers are where the inaccuracies are coming it's in. It's not inaccurate, it is, it's just how it's counted. But it's it counting 128 two different, two different people who were here. Programs. It was right after. Right. So, so, so and that is perfectly clear from here. I'm not, it's not, I'm not trying to scoot anything by you. I'm not trying to pretend it was a oh, different no, no, day. I'm saying your total then is off. Because you're counting the same group of people. Different programs, so it's two different sets of attendance. So once a discussion afterwards? Yes. yes. So cool. Which is a separate thing. And, and it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, checking a book out and then getting a renewal because you didn't get back in time and they said, we'll renew this for you. So... Does it matter? I mean, really, what does I, it when, matter? When you, when you, when you start talking, you start giving the impression that there's so many people here and there's, you know, you, you have to be careful. You know, figures are... Are there? I forget the exact quote, but you can, you know, figures lie and, you know. Well, they're used figures. for other purposes as well, and we want to make sure we're accurate in what our needs are. But I have just one last question about the programs: kids' place study can, room. Can, can, can I just finish off? So, so I understand now that you explained it that way, but I can see how it can easily be misunderstood. But it also might mean a change of staffing of some sort. You don't know. Really. Yeah, well, that's my concern. Is I don't want the staffing to grow because instead of 84, no. we had 84 We're plus 48, and then we had, you know, I don't want our, our numbers are so big in, in circulation, so we need to have more staff, but you know. So I, that's what I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be misconstrued that there's a necessity for more staff when maybe there isn't. I wouldn't be asking for more staff on the basis of statistics, though. I would be asking for more staff on the basis of we are able to keep up with the demand, which is a different thing. So, all right, so let's try and get through this. Uh, yeah. Carolyn, were you done? No, I'm sorry. I had a question about um, study rooms one and five. Are those kids? The uh, the, the what, study rooms one through five are on the lower level, and then there is a study room in youth services for adults working with kids. Or kids so is it like after room. school? No, it's just a study room. Mm -hmm. They post a study room. That's oh. not a program. That's just a statistic. Oh, okay. Statistic. Okay. okay. I, uh, Patty, I, I think you finish? had your hand up. You were waiting. Yes, I did. I just want to make sure she's finished so okay. she doesn't interrupt me. All right. Are you finished? Yes. Thank you. Great. Okay, first of all, my comment is to one of her comments. Working at a school, I know for a fact there are issues with reporting any personal information about minors. So her comment about having the addresses of the students, I question whether it's going to be an issue because they're minors. Second of all, <coughs> Um, I wanted to say a couple of positive things, if it's okay with you. Thank you. Uh, number one, uh, my question is about the uh, page 34, the partnership with Advocate Children's Hospital. Um, can you explain that a little bit? I was wondering if there's a possibility I could have my key club uh, work along with that. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, very likely. Um, we already do some uh, yeah. reading advocacy stuff. We we give we have what they call we call quack open a book and read, and we give uh, rubber ducks to kindergartners, and then they have a little cubby at their class, and they read to their ducks. Cute. That's very cute. Um, I can have uh, Miss Carrie get in touch with you cool. about cool. maybe the contact information there. Thank so, you. so what happens with that program? What this one? The one that you would get asked, or the, the little more information. Yeah, page 34. Page 34, right here. It's a, uh, it's about a uh, where they're donating books um, for younger children. It looks like yeah. for the oh, hospitalized yes. children and so, so yeah. on. The children right. departments of all the surrounding support the libraries around the hospital are right. uh, donating, and that it has library information on the inside to try to. Them. Yeah, since we are in displays, that's our hospital too, so it would be perfect for us to get involved with that. Okay, great. All right, cool. any other questions? Uh, yes. Well, I do have a comment. So Carolyn had quite a few suggestions for changing the uh, directory report. I, I suggested <coughs> an agenda item, and that all the trustees take a look at the directory report, and then we just 
discuss the kind of changes that we would like to do as a board as a whole. Um, okay. All right. Um, next month, can we put that down? And, uh, well, I don't think it should be changed just based on one trust. Right. Okay. right. Okay. Any other comments or questions about the director's report? Uh, any liaison reports? Hearing um, none. All right, secretary's report. I think we do have a secretary's report tonight. Diane, would you like to read it into the record? Yes. A certified copy of the ordinance 18-05, an ordinance levying and assessing taxes of the Niles Main District Library, Cook County, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018, and ending June 30, 2019, along with a certified truth and taxation certificate of compliance was filed with the Cook County Clerk on October 18, 2018. The ordinance is available for public inspection. Good to know. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's move on to new business. And this is uh, number 12. Um, there's a few things underneath new business. First of all, um, we have uh, a matter regarding cash payments. Um, just to get this on the floor so we can discuss it, I think we'll get more information once we uh, do a motion on the floor. Do I hear a motion to approve resolution 18 02, which is a resolution to include cash payments related to health insurance? As IMRF earnings. Second. Okay. Yeah, I was first. Right. Diane is always up. Diane is second. Diane did you second? Yes. Okay, got it. Um, all right. Um, Susan or Drake, can you spend, uh, explain more about what this would mean, how much it would cost? Uh, so when we um, uh, implemented the IMRF, uh, we also had a program uh, in place where we pay an incentive to employees who are eligible for uh, health insurance uh, who decide to get their insurance elsewhere to try to induce them to do that. Mm -hmm. The difference is uh, between $40 a pay period or roughly $1,000, it actually multiplies to 960 per year against roughly $10,000 for, uh, for health insurance. So for every employee that does this, we save about $9,000. And um, uh, these amounts uh, from the implementation, implementation date of uh, August 1st, 2016, were included as IMRF earnings. IMRF noticed that we didn't have a resolution on file that said that this was okay. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, do we, did they say we needed a resolution? They, that's exactly right. I see. So basically, what, this doesn't change anything. It doesn't cost any more. It doesn't cost any less, except for the you know time that we spend uh, helping them pay for their files so that that they're satisfied that they have all of their permissions in place. Okay. But how many people take this uh, cash There's, payment every year instead um, of the insurance? There were uh, 11 in uh, looking back in the payroll records. Um, all of them had been here for an entire year except one person was a partial year. So so roughly you know, uh, $10,500, say, uh, was actually paid out. To the employees? Yeah, uh, in order to avoid roughly uh, $110,000. A, a lot more health yeah, insurance. Yeah, mm -hmm. health right. insurance right? Okay, so how much would it cost us, or how much does it cost us, to pay uh, for IMRF on that amount, would you say? I'd say between seven and eight hundred dollars a year. A year. Okay. All right. And uh, this amount is—is is this reflected in their W two? The, yes. That, so it's—it's it's like all other earnings yes. that they receive for a year. Yes. Um, and uh, that's why, of course, we were just, that's the amount that was reported to IMRF, and that's why we've been paying IMRF taxes on that amount. Right. And, but we just need to have a resolution to that effect. That's exactly They're right. set telling us. Yeah, and this is actually okay. a form that we just, uh, you okay. know, on page 56, this is the form that we come up. All right. Uh, any comments or, I'm sorry. I have a couple questions. 
Right. Okay. Um, I, um, I have one question. We're talking about um, 11 employees who only have worked for a year? No. They've been here through the entire year. So they've they worked here a year. They've been here through the entire year. Mm -hmm. They've worked here longer than a year. But uh, one person out of the 11 uh, joined in the middle of the year. Joined IMRF? The library. Okay. Are they IMRF participants? Uh, of course they are. If they're offered health insurance, they're above the... So they're which is a 30, Excuse me. If, if they're offered health insurance, which is a 30-hour-per-week threshold, it stands to reason that they are above the 20-hour-a-week uh, IMRF threshold. So what I'm trying to figure out is, they, they, anyone who starts working here for a short period of time, we discourage them from our health benefits because it's more costly. And so this in, is in lieu of spending more money for their health costs. But to include this in their IMF, our earnings, that multiplies substantially, like when we end up having to pay for their, their pension later. So I'm trying to figure out, maybe it's $700 now, but what does it end up costing later? Um, I mean, that's my concern, why do we want to pad IMRF earnings? But secondly, um, I spoke with IMRF today, and she did explain that um, instead of providing health insurance to your employees, that sometimes they receive money. So that's what you're explaining that you're doing. You're giving them cash so that they can purchase their insurance elsewhere? No. We're giving them, we're giving them a small stipend to encourage them to go buy their insurance elsewhere maybe a spouse's uh, uh, policy or stay on their parents' policy uh, or, you know, whatever is available. Okay. To so not cash, the, uh, but a stipend? Well... A check. It's included it's, in their pay. Yeah. Stipend yeah. equals yeah. cash yeah. equals yeah. earnings okay. equals... How much are we giving them? Uh, $40 a pay period, okay. which times 24 is $960 a year. Of course, if they join the library in the middle of the year, it's less because it's a partial year. Okay, and then my second comment was when I spoke with her and I told her that um, I was um, questioning this process for the Niles Main Library, she said that we did not have a cafeteria plan, so we weren't able to do this. That's not true. Uh, we do have a cafeteria plan that's under uh, Section 125 of the Internal Revenue Code, uh, which allows us to uh, which allows us to uh, allows employees to pay for their benefits on a pre-tax basis. But is the cafeteria plan with IMRF or the way you file? I think if she's talking more about the IMRF aspect of it, I think. IMRF provides pension mm -hmm. and nothing else. I know they provide pension based on a, a certain we don't, structure. We don't need uh, to have a Section 125 plan to be a member of IMRF. But in order to um, in order to include cash payments into the IMRF earnings, she said you did. So that's what I'm trying to get some clarification on. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, Do I, I, I think question or rep. Greg got this information from IMRF. So they have told us that we need, yeah, but Greg is the one who works with IMRF all the time. He is mm -hmm. our agent for the building and, and he talks to our person about what we need and they told us we need to file this. So it's really not a question of should we be doing this or not. They've told us we need to do it. I think it's just, it's a no-brainer to just do it. It's well, they shouldn't tell paper. us we need to do it. They did tell but Carolyn, I just don't think you understood it well enough to be able to explain. So I think it's just sort of a, a form that we need to... Yeah, it was an oversight and I need to get it done. Right, right. All right, uh, yes, Linda. I just have a couple questions. Um, how much is it monthly again for a single person? Uh, $40. For the, the $40. Oh, no, 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 no. I need for insurance. Oh, for insurance? Uh, and that, do we have an HMRO PPL? Do we get to choose? No, you guys signed off on that like back in April. I know, yeah. I know. I'm just trying to like... Is it like... I mean, it's Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about nine hundred and thirty dollars a month, less 
um, less forty-seven dollars twice a month, so ninety-four dollars because that's what that's what we actually charge a single employee. That's what I meant. Yes, I meant. Okay. How charge much do we charge? Them? How much do we charge them? We so charge them uh, on, a, on their paycheck. Forty-seven dollars a paycheck. So ninety-four. Oh, okay. So ninety-four so, a month. Okay, so it's pretty much even. What's even? Like what we're giving them, or what they would have to pay. Well, well, so, one. It's, I mean, I understand the whole return. It's opposite directions. Right. It's opposite directions. Because I'm thinking, well, would they want to just? If they did, it's not that expensive to actually take it. So it is to our benefit. I'm thinking, is it to our benefit to give them this money? That's oh, yeah, we save about ninety thousand dollars a year. But then yeah. again. I'm thinking, well, for $47, I'm like, well, you know, that's not that much money a month to get, get you know, your own plan. However, but then you get a little cash to get in return. Yeah. Then it can add up and you're like, okay, so I'm just trying to say, mm -hmm. ah, is it worth to still do that? Would they really still, you know, not just take the insurance button? I get it. Okay. So my next question is, um, when we take out the IMRF uh, or when they get their benefits, do they get their benefits on their gross earnings or their net earnings? Gross. On their gross. Okay. Because I know that's an option. Uh, you can either do it on their net or their gross. No! We have that at the register. Yeah, I don't think that's an option. So do, are you an IMRF or you're in the teacher? She is an IMRF. She's an IMRF. Okay, you're in the teacher's yeah. union. Yeah. Like yeah. They're in the IMRF. I am they do it on the net. Yeah, no, it's, it's all it's gross. It's, it's all gross. gross. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things are pretty gross. gross. Mm -hmm. Okay, all, all right. Yeah. Um, okay, all right, thank you. Right. That's it. We're ready to Everybody take a vote. Uh, please? Yes. Carolyn? No, I'm going to abstain because apparently I don't understand the process. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yeah. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Yeah, thank you. We have another resolution concerning IMRF. We need a motion to approve resolution 18 3, which is a resolution to cast a ballot in the 2018 IMRF executive trustee election. That's recommended. We do so in favor of Stu Stanish. Stu Stanish? Stu Stanish. Okay. Yes, I. I Okay, you have a motion in favor yes. of that, and do you have a second? Second. Okay. What, uh, tell us, Just what do we know about Stu? It's, it's right here. All we know is what we already gave you, and we read through the two, uh, the two candidates separately, right. and we both thought the same one sounded best, but we have no stake in this whatsoever, so you guys can do right. whatever you want. Does anyone really want to go for Brett Trent instead? I don't know either mm -hmm. one of those people. No. Yeah. Can we do it right in? Dennis, do you see it? Do you see it? Could be fun. You got to be vested in IMRF to be. Ah, that's right. All right. I don't have the pleasure. Okay. Thank you. 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 No, it's a sheet. No, it's a sheet. Oh, it's a sheet. She's my woman. She's my woman. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay, thank you. All right, so also on a new business, um, Susan and Greg have given us a request for proposal for auditing services. So you may remember last March we talked about this. This came up last March. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we brought this up is we've used the same auditing firm for decades. Uh, and, and personally, I'll say I've been very happy with them. I, I think they've done a great job. They're uh, very responsible and responsive to our questions. But uh, I understand that it's the best practices are such or rec that are recommended to us is that you periodically change auditing firms just to see if they catch something, look at something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, it, so I, that's why. That's why we're doing this. Not that we have any dissatisfaction with McClure and Sura, or dissatisfaction necessarily with price or anything, but it's just generally thought, uh, and I believe in accounting circles and elsewhere, that 
changing accounting firms, brings in new pairs of eyes to look at your financial situation and that periodically it's, it's a good thing to do this. So that's why, uh, and we talked about it last March, but at the time I think we didn't feel like we had enough time to talk about it, mm -hmm. and so we just sort of said, okay, we'll think about it next year. So, mm -hmm. fine. So we've had our accounting uh, firm take care of this year, uh, but again, uh, we don't want to drop the ball on this, and this is why it's on the agenda again. So, um, do we is want to... Is it open bid? I mean, is it put out to... to multiple uh, groups to allow so. for audit? Yeah, how, how, would you re how would you advertise this? Or how would you put out a request for proposal? Uh, we would do two things, um, maybe three. Um, first thing we would do is obviously post it on the, uh, on the web page. We <coughs> would um, contact the Illinois CPA Society and whatever ser listing services that they have. Uh, we would make sure it was on there. And then the last thing we would do is um, look at other libraries that uh, they all have an audit requirement, uh, mm -hmm. other library districts, and we get a, a series of names from them. Um, I won't say it's like highly specialized, but there are a lot of firms that um, uh, do a fair amount of business in libraries. So once we got those names, then what we would do is send it directly to them in, into their uh, you know, their proposal unit. And then do we, meaning the library, do they, do you guys have a list of requirements that this is what we're looking for for the person that's going to be doing the audits for our library? Just as if you were to be saying, I, I want to do uh, some building upgrade, I want to have uh, this capability, this capability, this capability. Yeah, so on uh, page 62, uh, Roman 9, uh, so as a response to this request, uh, for proposal, responding to this request, we request the following information. Okay, great. Uh, and there's and there's 12 items there. Okay. Um, you know, if you know, first of all, if if they're a uh, public accounting firm, uh, they have to meet standards. Sure. Uh, just like any professional services firm. Um, and uh, in meeting those standards, uh, there's evidence like uh, uh, they have. Um, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. Review, I, I just wondered if, is there something that our library required versus some other type of organization? No. Okay, no. all right. We're not so different. Okay. Um, great. My only question on this is, what kind of time frame are we talking about? There's uh, a schedule. Yeah, in the, in the back, I think it's on page 63 or 61. Mm -hmm. 61? Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I, I said we okay. sent it out in November and okay. notification to successful bettors with final decision by the board on February 20th and 21st. And then usually, when do we request it then? In March or was it April? Uh, I think, I, I can't remember. I thought it was February or March. It was March. Was March. It March? Like here, yeah. So yeah. that would be just the right time we need to then. Yeah, so. It. So, cool. so if you look at if you look at this schedule in the context of you know uh, having this discussion in March instead of November, you know you can you see that we take it take us right to the end of the year practically. So we have to shorten up some of the time frames. Um, but you know now in November we have the luxury of time. Okay. Cool. Greg, I just okay. have one uh, on number eleven, page sixty-two. You're asking, describe how, how and why your firm is different from other firms being considered. They won't really know what firms are being considered. Uh, it's a small community. You know, they'll know that, you know, um, and of course we'll, you know, we'll, um, well, it's up to you actually if we include Claire and Sarah or not okay. um, in, in the rebid on this. But, you know, essentially um, we want them to tell us so, sure, I know why. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying that if I read that, I would say I want to know. Yeah, I, I'm sure that they'll know that, you know, sick is just getting one, for example, because they play very big in, uh, in library space. Uh, 
there's two or three other ones that are pretty prominent. So uh, they'll be able to adjust their arguments, you know, to uh, to those folks specifically. I'm sure that they've been asked this question before. Sure. Okay. Um, Patty, did you have a question? I was going to say, if we're looking to get a new set of eyes, mm -hmm. would we submit? That's a, good, that's a good question, and um, I, just for my opinion, I, I would not want to bar them from submitting a request for proposal, yeah, right. just because what if we don't get many uh, bids, true. or that's what true. if the price is just right. outrageous? Right. True. Um, so, you're right, that's the reason we're doing it, but I, I don't want to tell them they can't bid. Uh, yeah. and, and, and we that's acceptable out of their head. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. So, um, we, oh, did I, uh, I'm sorry, did I get a motion for that? No. Yeah, it's just discussion. It's just discussion. Oh, discussion. right. Okay. Uh, Pardon? Somebody yeah, so do we, do we just have sort of a, uh, if we, obviously we're not spending any money right now, uh, but do we have a general consensus that, uh, uh, Greg and Susan can issue this RFP, uh, send that out, asking for proposals, and they should come back on the dates listed here. And then it won't be till after the first of the year when we'll get those and we can evaluate those then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, uh, why yeah. don't you uh, do that, Greg and Susan. And then moving to our next item. Uh, okay, this, I hope there's real, like, really no debate on this, but do I hear a motion to approve a resolution 18-04, honoring Neil O'Shea. And that, that resolution is coming around. Uh, Cornelius Neil O'Shea. Can you listen? You know, I wish he was here. Uh, you know what, I don't think you're going to be able to get no. Neil here to accept it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he is in uh, this abroad at the moment and mm -hmm. will be gone for a couple months and so oh, uh, I, my hope was that if you passed it we would have it printed up and try to get his wife to come accept it on his behalf because there's no way that he will do it he, and he is the word humble is used here uh, once or twice and he is a very very humble person yeah, i thought i remembered you saying he didn't want any big deal you okay, know he absolutely refused to have any form of acknowledgement of him it's just his nature well, well um, too bad for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, for one, am going to miss him a great deal. Yeah. He's quite a fixture he's at the top of the stairs there. there. Yeah. You would see him all the time. And he's created just some wonderful programs over the year. And I, uh, he's been a real asset to our library. And I, I know I'm going to miss him. So um, I actually do need a motion to approve this resolution. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, any other discussion about this resolution? Um, honoring Neil O'Shea? Okay, can I have a roll call? Yeah. Hey, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, now we have uh, an executive session coming up. Um, can we I, take a break? Yeah, uh, okay. All right. Bathroom break, five minutes. Thank you. All right. So, okay, I think we're done. Wait, like, what else do we have to do? That's it? Yeah. Oh, uh, do I have a motion to. Two hours, 18 minutes. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting itself. Do we have such a motion? I Motion. Aye. Oh, we're not going to vote. No, actually, no vote. No. 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 Okay. Easy come, easy go. Do I have a cold? I get a cold for six weeks. Did you take the roll on the agenda? Well, we're just about to do that. Oh. Okay. Oh. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? 
Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Here you go, Matt. Okay. Does anyone have some fives for me?